Hi everyone and welcome to the second video in Unit 3. This video is all about the gas laws. Uh, we're going to be looking at the relationship between um, two of the four possible variables that define gases. So we'll look at pressure, volume, temperature, and number of moles or number of molecules. This is section 10.3 in the book, so if you need extra practice or you just want to review the material, go ahead and just look at 10.3. So we're going to start by looking at pressure versus volume. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the relationship between the two variables, both graphically and mathematically. So to start off with pressure and volume, this is defined by Boyle's Law. He was considered the father of gases. He came up with the first idea um, that all gases um, follow. So with Boyle's Law, um, as the container size decreases, so if we look here from the right to left, as the container size decreases, particles collide with the wall and with each other more, which raises the pressure. If you remember in the last video, we talked about pressure being equivalent to the number of collisions. So the more collisions um, with the wall and with other particles, the higher the pressure. So as you are decreasing the size of this container, you have more collisions and therefore higher pressure. So qualitatively, as one goes up, the other goes down, right? As volume goes up, as you increase the volume, there is more space for your gas particles to move, which means there are less collisions. So as you increase the volume, you then decrease the pressure. And this is assuming that temperature and moles are held constant. So graphically, looking at this, you looked at these relationships um, in the lab. You looked at all of these graphs to see the relationship. So we said as volume increases down here, pressure decreased. So you should have had this nice curve as your pressure versus volume graph. Notice it's not linear. Um, it is exponential. So therefore, pressure and volume are inversely proportional. So the pressure versus volume graph, we have this curve. Um, if we actually plot volume versus one over pressure or pressure versus one over volume, that would give us the straight line. This represents the um, inverse relationship. So with Boyle's law, um, pressure and volume are proportional, or excuse me, are inversely proportional. So pressure times volume equals a constant. Um, this constant depends on temperature and moles. You don't have to actually worry about what K is. This is just how we can derive Boyle's Law. Um, and Boyle's Law is P1V1 equals P2V2. So pressure 1 times volume 1 equals pressure 2 times volume 2. Um, you can think of it as boiling peas and vegetables. Right? You boil peas and vegetables. So P1V1 equals P2V2. Um, again, this is an inverse relationship. The next one that you looked at was volume and temperature. With volume and temperature, when you increase the temperature, it increases the kinetic energy of the molecules. Um, the faster moving molecules are going to hit the walls and each other more often and harder, which is actually going to increase the pressure. But we want the pressure to be held constant, so we have to change the volume. What this means, if we look at this diagram then, um, as we increase the temperature, okay, in order to keep volume constant, we have to increase the volume. This is why if you actually put a balloon uh, in a car on a hot summer day, um, the balloon will actually expand. Right? That's a flexible volume. Um, if you put it into ice, it will actually shrivel up. So qualitatively, as temperature goes up, volume goes up, or as temperature goes down, volume goes down, and this is assuming pressure and moles are held constant. So graphically, if we look at this, um, as temperature increases, volume increases. Um, it is important to know that with Charles' law, you should use Kelvin, um, because in any Charles' law problems, if you use a negative Celsius, that's going to probably give you a negative value. So it's important that we use Kelvin in all of our gas law problems. Um, and that's because when we're at absolute zero, every motion stops. That's zero Kelvin. 
So Kelvin cannot have any negative numbers. So you want to make sure that you use Kelvin in all gas law problems. So with Charles Law, um, in order to calculate, we can use V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Right? And that's because of the relationship. If you say that they are direct and you put it equal to a constant, when you rearrange a V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, temperature should be in Kelvin. Um, this is a direct variation, and so this graphs a straight line. Um, this picture shows what happens if you put a balloon into liquid nitrogen. Okay, you are actually decreasing the temperature a lot, which means you have to decrease the volume. The next one that we have is Gay-Lussac's law. This is pressure versus temperature, so you have PT. With Gay-Lussac's law, increasing the temperature increases the kinetic energy of the molecules. Okay, so whenever you increase temperature, you increase motion, increase the kinetic energy. With the higher velocities, the particles are going to hit more often um, and harder, which means pressure is higher. Uh, we have to assume that volume is held constant. So qualitatively, as one goes up, the other goes up. With this, uh, temperature has to be in Kelvin, remember. All gas laws need to be done in Kelvin. So P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. This is a linear graph because it is a direct relationship. Okay, um, something else that uh, Gay-Lussac's law kind of covers is the law of combining volumes. So gas volumes during a chemical reaction are proportional to coefficients. So it's just like a mole ratio. Um, so if we have two moles of H2 plus one mole of O2 making two moles of H2O, we can assume that 2 liters plus 1 liter equals 2 liters. Or we could say if this is 1 liter of H2, that means we have half a liter of O2 and 1 liter of H2O. So gas volumes are equivalent um, to the mole ratios. Now with Avogadro's hypothesis, so I looked at Bar Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Gay-Lussac's Law. Now, Avogadro had a hypothesis based on Gay-Lussac's work. And what he said was equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure have equal number of molecules. So again, if you have equal volume, same temperature, same pressure, you have equal numbers of molecules. It doesn't matter what gas it is, whether it's hydrogen, whether it's carbon dioxide. If volume is equal, temperature and pressure stay constant, your number of molecules, AKA your number of moles, are equal. And so what this means is um, he came up with the molar volume idea. So 22.4 liters of any gas at standard temperature and pressure has Avogadro's number of particles. This is the molar volume. So notice in this figure you have helium, nitrogen, and methane. Um, notice even though the masses are different, they all have one mole of molecules because they all have 22.4 liters and they all are at standard temperature and pressure. So with Avogadro's law, uh, when you increase the number of molecules, you're increasing collisions and therefore will increase the volume if pressure is held constant. So what you need to do is just figure out what you're comparing. If you're comparing volume and gas, that means pressure is held constant. So think about if you increase the temperature, what would naturally happen to pressure and what would you have to do to volume in order to get the pressure back to where it was originally. So qualitatively, um, as number of moles go up, volume goes up. And again, that's because as number of moles go up, you're adding more molecules, you're increasing collisions, which increases the pressure, but pressure needs to stay constant. So if pressure was increased, we need to get pressure back down to where it was. So that means that we need to expand the volume in order to get pressure back down. So quantitatively, okay, V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. Okay, or you can flip it, N1 over V1. Um, it doesn't matter which way as long as N and V are on, you know, N1 and V1 are on the left, N2 and V2 are on the right. So if we actually rearrange this equation, 
um, we move some stuff around, you actually find that V1 over V2 equals N1 over N2. And so this goes back to the law of combining volumes that volume and mole, ratio and mole ratios are equivalent to one another. So if the problem gives you volume, you can actually find the mole ratio. So that's very useful as you're working with gases. So if it tells you that you have five liters of something and four liters of something else, you can actually determine the mole ratio based on your volume because the volume ratio is equal to the mole ratio. So how does the kinetic molecular theory describe each gas law at the particle level? I briefly went through um, what happens to the particles um, as we're changing the variables, but what I want you to do is go back to each of these four laws and I want you to describe at the particle level what is happening. So for Boyle's law, for example, um, you're using the kinetic molecular theory that we talked about at the end of the first video. And with Boyle's law, what I want you to do is think about what is happening, why is pressure and volume inverse? Well, if you think about it, as you increase the volume, you are now allowing the particles or the molecules or the atoms to have more space to move around, right? So they now have more space to move, which means there will be less collisions and less pressure. That's what I want you to do for each of the four gas laws that we just looked at. That way, not only are you looking at it mathematically, but you're also thinking about it conceptually because you will be asked both types of questions. Now the last gas law um, combines Boyle's, Gay-Lussac's, and Charles' law into one. Um, it actually allows you to do calculations um, for situations in which only the amount of gas is constant. And I'll show you how to even add the n variable in so whatever is held constant, you can actually solve for anything else. So when we take all of the gas laws and put them into one, you get P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. If you remember only one equation, this is the one that you want to remember, okay? Because you can derive any of the three. So Boyle's, Charles, or Gay-Lussac's law from the combined. So let's say that um, you're given a problem where pressure is held constant, okay? Write this combined gas law out and just cross out pressure. Then you have V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. You can also add N1 and N2 to this combined gas law. And now you even have Avogadro's law in here. So let's say that pressure and temperature are held constant. So I'm going to cross out temperature. Now I have V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. Now you have, that's Avogadro's law. So this combined gas law is going to be so, so, so important as you're working through gases. Um, this will be the one that you want to memorize. So going back to looking at the kinetic molecular theory, um, I want you to suppose that we have a gas that's in um, a cylinder with a movable piston. So it's like a syringe. Okay? Think, think about a gas that's in a syringe. What I want you to do is think about how each of these changes is going to affect pressure. So for A, okay, you heat the gas from 298 to 360 Kelvin at constant volume. So if you are increasing the temperature, what are you doing to particle motion? You're increasing it. It's speeding up. So then if you're speeding up particle motion, what's happening to collisions? You have more. So what does that mean about pressure? It's a higher pressure. So then I want you to think about B and C. So read through it, pause the video, write down um, what you think it is, and then unpause the video and we'll go through it. So with B it says re you reduce the volume from one liter to half a liter at constant temperature. So you are taking one liter, you're reducing it down to 0.5. So you have the same temperature, you have the same number of particles. If you decrease the temperature, or excuse me, if you decrease the volume, 
you now have more collisions in that container. More collisions means more pressure. And then C, you add additional gas to the container. So the volume is going to stay constant. We now are adding extra gas. So instead of maybe five molecules in here, we now have 10. So when we add 10, what's happening to collisions? You have more. Therefore, pressure is going to go up. Okay, so this is just thinking about it conceptually. Um, but again, you want to make sure you can do both conceptual and math. So when solving a gas law problem, there are some things that you want to do. The first thing I would recommend doing is labeling each variable that you're given. So label P1, V1, T1, uh, P2, T2, whatever variables you're given. Uh, make sure you match them up correctly. Make sure you know P1 and V1, you have those matched up. Um, and then determine what is being held constant. What I would recommend doing is writing the combined gas law down. Right? P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Cross out what's being held constant. Then you can, determ you can determine the relationship. So is it inverse, is it direct? Um, the only one that is inverse is Boyle's law, P and V. Then you can plug it into the needed gas law. So if you want to memorize each individual gas law, you can. If you just want to memorize the combined and use that, you can do that as well. Um, and then think about if your answer should be higher or lower than you're given. So let's say that you're given two temperatures, you're increasing the temperature, and you're asked to find uh, what the resultant pressure would be. Well, if you're increasing temperature, you also should increase pressure, which means your final result should be higher than your initial. So always double check those results. Um, this is going to hopefully be helpful step by step as you're going through gas law problems. Um, if memorization is difficult for you, if it's difficult for you to memorize each of the gas laws and know what's on top, what's on bottom, if you should multiply, if you should divide, um, in the next video, I'm going to actually show you a different method to use where you actually can just think about the relationships and just multiply by a fraction. Um, that's using PVNT tables. So if you're interested in that, watch the next video. Um, if you prefer just using the gas laws, then that's fine. You don't have to watch the next video, um, but it's just to help you out.